Welcome to New Tech High in a world of real learning. But don't take my word for it. Come on in and see it for yourself. Although there is some direct teaching in New Tech High at Capel, we focus mainly on projects, usually taking four to six weeks. At New Tech High, we use the projects to help us learn the content by using real-world skills, such as project management, oral communication, research, and collaboration. So we're going to start off by putting you in groups. We're going to divide you up in two ways, and then we're going to divide you up in another way. After that. Today in American Studies, we're launching a new project that we're calling Yield Debate. And what we're doing in this project, it's set, the premise is it's set on the eve of the presidential election of 1800. And we're asking the kids to look at events in U.S. history uh, in the 25 years prior to that and take either a Federalist or Anti-Federalist stance in debating those issues that have come up in the last 25 years. There is a new entry document. Pull it up and we'll go over it together. The entry document is something that we get at the beginning of each project. It may take different forms. It may be a video. It may be a PowerPoint presentation. It might be some cool new online program that they're going to showcase for us. But it's something unique for each project. Just gives us an idea of what we're going to be doing. It tells us what our final product will be. And it also gives us an idea of the content that we're going to need to be learning so that we can create our list of knows and need to knows to help us get started with the project. Let's talk about what we know from this entry document. Knows and need to knows are derived from our entry document. Um, we decide what we know, such as content that we'll need to include, the program that we'll be using. And it's in an organized manner, so you can look at it and see exactly what you have to do. And so when we break that down, a lot of times we go into content versus logistical. So you may be asking questions about due dates, or you may be asking questions about the content of the project. The one thing that I noticed coming from a traditional environment is the relationship and the culture that we have with our learners here at New Tech. Um, it's a partnership between facilitator and learner. Uh, it's not a top-down approach like at a traditional school between a teacher and a student. There's definitely a partnership and we're trying to develop relationships and work together to accomplish our goals. Uh, so within your groups of three or four, uh, Come up with a driving question and we'll go around in a minute and listen to each one. Driving questions are the purpose of our project and it always includes what we need to do in the project and the final product that will be produced so that if we ever get confused on what we should be doing in the project we can refer back to the driving question and it can help provide direction. So let's talk about uh, just quickly as a as a class what some of our next steps might be. So when you think you've got one, raise your hand. Um, next steps are what you do after the knows and need to knows. Uh, it's basically like saying what you need to do to start the project, okay. like to officially start the project. Because everything before the next step is basically gearing up to start the project. They are what we need to do next in the project, whether it's research, have a workshop from the teacher, figure out the content that we need to know so that we can get going with our project. You need to do a social contract with your group of three or four, whatever you are Our social contract is a document that each team creates at the beginning of the project, and it's going to make sure that the team is on the same page. It's going to provide contact information for the team so that they can stay in touch and meet outside of class. It also establishes group rules so that we know exactly what each group member should be doing at each time. And you're going to, when it comes your time, you're going to stand up tell us what you categorized it as and why and kind of defend it. You know, Journals and scaffolding else. activities are used to check for understanding to make sure that we're understanding the content that needs to go in the project as well as to provide focus. Scaffolding is like journaling in that it is a measurement of understanding for the benefit of both the learners and the facilitators. This is the Federalists um, because they liked the Constitution and they thought it was way better than the Articles of Confederation.
How many of you have seen video of the British House of Commons? Yeah. Workshops are typically on request, and so they will be something typically derived from nose knee to nose and the driving question that help give students a better understanding of the so material. That's what we're going to watch right now so you guys can see how this works. It's interesting. In this particular project, our workshops were given in the form of videos, and those videos showed us the concepts that we were going to need. We learn how to work with people that have different work habits. We learn how to connect our strengths and weaknesses to compensate for each other. And we, by collaborating, we produce greater products. This means a minute has passed. Minute 45, which I've only had to use once today. At the end of projects, we like to focus on certain learning objectives. And in this project, what we're focusing on primarily is their oral communication skills. We'll be looking at their persuasive uh, skills as well as their ability to bring in the content and back up their arguments. The first thing is that we want them to be dressed professionally, um, either in a business attire or, in the case of this project, if they were dressed in the period that they were representing, uh, that would be okay, too. The second thing that we're looking for is that they, when they're speaking in front of the class, um, they, their voices project, they make great eye contact, they are listening to the other debaters, they're able to make points based upon what the other debaters are saying. Presentations are probably the most fun part of a project. They allow us to use our sense of creativity beyond belief. Um, we can dress up as different characters, and there's tons of different programs that we've been given to create a creative, interesting presentation. By asking them to present that to us uh, orally, what they're showing us is that they get it. And if other students ask questions about them during the debate, or if we ask them questions during the debate, they need to be able to answer those questions in a way that shows to us as the facilitators that they understand what it is that they were supposed to be learning. And that's a brief summary.